We are. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to Woto Podcast. Every time. Every single time. Every single time. This one shall be known as The One Which Sound Forgot. Wow. That sounds epic, intriguing, and delightful. Yeah. Do you know why it's called that? Um, no. It's because we can't regulate sound for this one. We can't. Because all of our equipment is in... China. A fire. The st- it's storage. been a, a sandwich. There was a fire. A fire sandwich. There was a fire sandwich. We are busy building a studio set. And yes. everything is in boxes, including sound operation equipment. Is that a man? <laughs> we just put a sound <laughs> engineer in a box. We packed him up somewhere. He's somewhere in this room. There's so many boxes. I don't know where he is. Just muffled screams. So we have no idea if this is too loud, too quiet, whether <laughs> it sounds like that, whether <coughs> that hurts. <coughs> no one knows. That could have. That we could have a hundred bleeding eared people now. Yeah. And we just don't know. And to top it all off, we don't care. care. Thank you. Because <laughs> we just wanted to make sure that this went out into the world. You yes. know. Keep up. Well, it has presence. been a while since the last podcast. I mean, the it's been whole a while since you, since we last recorded one. The last one came out last week. Did it? Yeah, you went away. We recorded that before you left. Yeah, it's we just did. that it took me three weeks to. Well, I've I've been in America for two and a half weeks. Is that I? enjoyable? It was very enjoyable. What well, one thing? Yeah. That was the best thing that happened while you were there. What was it? Uh, eating food. Eating food. I ate so much food. That I have genuinely put on weight for the first time in my entire life. <clears throat> yeah, I, can I find tell. it. I, I find didn't want to. I didn't want to mention it. But yeah, you are globular. <laughs> <laughs> they when I went to the doctor, they def- they actually defined me as globular. Yeah, no, I which know. I I paid them to say that. Did you? Yeah, that's what happened there. I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, I know it didn't make sense, did it? He was pretty nasty. Yeah, he was also a sixteen-year-old boy. He looked a lot like you. Yeah. As a 16-year-old boy? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well then, Rampact Show. Three features that I'm excited about. I've got absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever that you will stay tuned for the entirety of this special mm. no sound record equipment monitoring device sound operator episode. Something that I would like to mention this episode, if mm. I may. Um, I would just like to say thank you to everyone that has sent us um, drawings <laughs> of the various things that we say in the podcasts to our Twitter accounts. We've had the squirrel, the squirrel with no back legs. Yeah, forgotten his name. Can't remember even what episode it was, but you remembered <laughs> and you drew it. Um, <laughs> has only been three. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't one know. in three chance. Which one was it? Three. <laughs> 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 um, and also Space Nan. Yeah, I've got a couple of good Space Nans sent through. There's some amazing Space Nan drawings sent through to our Twitters. So thank you so much for the people that took the time to draw those. I'm glad you enjoy Space Nan, fellow viewers, sounders. Listeners. Well, like, listeners. 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 That's what happens. Audio-based entertainment from World of the Orange. Um, because I've written part two, episode mm. two, and it leads... It it leaves it open for at least two more parts. Oh, Realistically, it leaves it open endlessly. It, I hope it's endless. But I've set it up so that there will at least be two more episodes. Okay. Because I'm incredibly yeah, excited. I am so excited for Space Nan. But I think we should probably start the show on maybe Liam interviews. <laughs> Liam interviews, Liam interviews, Liam interviews, Liam interviews, Liam interviews. Okay then, I suppose I should leave the room. Yes, if you could leave the room. I've just started the podcast. Yeah. And I'm being told to leave. It's necessary. The slow trudge <laughs> out of the room. And if you could send in the next guest. 
Here he comes now. Hello? Hello. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Yeah, right. My name's... My name's Blue Keg. Blue Keg. Blue Keg. Now, I am... I am almost certain that this is the first time ever that someone has spoken to a foot. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's true, that. Now... I'm the first one... Um, now, I, I've been told that you suffer from body odour well, quite well, a lot. And how I, does that affect your daily life? It doesn't affect my daily life too much because I've got no nose. You'll notice on my face here, on my footy little face, <laughs> yeah. on my little footy face here, there's not actually a nose. Could you describe where your face is? Is it on the on the palm of the foot? You see or this, on the top you, of the well, foot. you see this little gap opening and closing in, in between your big toe. That's my mouth. <laughs> wow, that's my mouth. Yeah, that's my face. That's very interesting. The big toe. Do you what th- you call the big toe? Yeah, our kind find it a little bit offensive that you would refer to my face as a big toe. Because actually, he's genuinely your face. But how would you know? This is the first interview. Well, that's right. I'm here as a uh, person of interest. An ambassador. An ambassador from the human race to a foot. Um, That's correct. I am the first foot to have done an interview in this country. Incredible. Um, do you suffer from athlete's foot or any kind of cheese? I do not suffer from athlete's foot, but my cousin, Bryony, <laughs> <laughs> he's, Ru- he suffers. He. Bri- Bri- <laughs> Bri- Bryony. Bryony suffers terrible afflictions from athlete's foot. How does he go about uh, curing those? Well, he's got an ointment. Yes. Which he likes to apply to his face. How does he apply it? With, he dips his face in the pot and then rolls around. <laughs> yeah. And that's how he applies <laughs> That's it. how he does well it. Well done. That's, that's it. Wow. Many of us suffer from various things, but I'm actually the cleanest foot you'll ever meet. Yeah, you you do look very clean. Although I can actually see a um a, a dry piece of skin that seems to be hanging off somewhat. Hey, that's my callus. Yeah. Um, Much as warriors get different badges of honour. Right. Us feet, we get calluses. So are you saying that in battle, if you lose a battle, then you have to cut your calluses off? But <laughs> depending on whether... If you if you do win the battle, you keep the callus, and depending on how big the callus is... On and how foot, thick and strong... It, you are undefeated. Undefeated. Wow. And yours is... Mine is hanging off. <laughs> Aye. So how many times have you been defeated for it to get hanging off? I have been in one battle. Yeah. Or maybe it's like, um, in a battle, if you lose a battle, then y- you have to remove the callus completely. But if you just lose an argument, it it's just hacked a bit. No, that's, that sounds like a very human way to deal with it. No. Mm. You see, the battle was a draw. Oh, I, I see. The battle was a draw with the other foot. Yes. So my callus hangs off now. Yeah. For all eternity. Yeah. And the other callus yes. hangs off for all eternity. That's incredible. Who did you fight? His name was Carl Drogo. I the foot. B- Carl Drogo, um a-, a character out of the series Game of Thrones. Aye. I I don't believe you're real. My good man, you introduced me as a Brad, talking is that foot. You? Brad. Brad? No. <laughs> I am a talking foot and I believe we're done here. <laughs> Goodbye. Could you please foot. carry me out? Uh, yeah, no, I'll I'll just Without me knee attached, I can't walk anywhere. Uh, uh, that that's probably an interview question for another time. Uh, how so do you get about? How how do you get about and where did the rest of you go? Taxes. Taxis. And West. Just West. He went West. Took me knee. Took mm. me thigh. Took me hip. 
Yeah. Were you in control of the human body? Or was the human body in control of you? Now, you see, this is where it gets very confusing. Is it flus- Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yes. You know, which came first? Which one was it? It was obviously the chicken. Thank you. And therefore, obviously, the foot. <laughs> Incredible. We're done here. We are done. Thank you so much for... I challenge you... No. ...to foot callous battle. I don't have any calluses to lose. So I will not be joining in the battle. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. Uh, and that thank was foot. Foot. Thank foot. Thank foot. We say thank foot. Like trench foot. No, instead of thank you, yeah. we say thank foot. In foot we trust. <laughs> <laughs> thank foot, in foot we trust. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, and now we just wait for Brad to come back in the room. Hello. Hello. I'm back. Ooh. Wow. That was a musical entrance. Yeah. It's a bit smelly, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, he like cheese. he stunk. It smells like cheese. He said that his um, body who was, odor. Who was he? It was a foot. A foot. It was a talking oh, foot. Oh, that's what they were carrying out. I wonder what that was. Yeah. So what did the foot want? Okay, so the foot um, was disgusting. He looked gross. Covered in hair. Mm. Cheese. Mm. He had. He just had a stinking smell coming off. Like it. my foot. Mm. Did it have one purple toe? Yeah, it did. <laughs> Weird. That is odd. That is that odd. That is very odd. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. My feet are pristine. I don't believe that for a single second. Have you seen my purple toe? Yeah. yeah Emma, Emma showed me it. Yeah. She wanted me to touch it, and I was like, no, I don't want to touch that. I wouldn't even know if you were touching it, because I can't feel it. You probably need to get that seen too. Brad's got a toe that has gone purple and cannot feel pain. It's dead. I think it's, <laughs> it's dead. I've got a dead toe. There's nothing that the doctor can do about dead, so don't worry about it. <laughs> well, the fact it's still got colour means that it might not be dead. Everything's got colour. <laughs> 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 dead things still have colour. Yeah, no, you're right. Thank you. I will not go to a doctor about it. No. I've got loads of them. I've got spares coming out of every other bit of the foot. <laughs> just just little claws <laughs> coming out talons. of the foot. Little talons. Little growing talons. new ones every week, like a shark's tooth. Thank you. Um, what 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 do you want to come up next? What do you want? What do you, I mean? This is your this is your show. I think we should end on Space Nan. You want to end on Space Nan? Space Nan. I am more excited for Space Nan than I was for the finale of <laughs> Game of Thrones. Oh my god! And quite frankly, um, that's a big deal in my book. In that case, it's time for 1952. 1952. 1952. 1952. 1952. 1952. 1952. So in 1952, uh, the general idea, I guess, is that me and Brad are the same person. person. Not like that, though. We don't have to speak at the same time. time. We're just talking from the same perspective of the same person. person. Um... Okay, and I've entitled this episode of 1952. What did you entitle it? The Pilgrim's Warlock? Or it, was the, it was the Warlock's Parade. The Warlock's Parade! So, that makes it sound like we've written this. and We haven't. All that happened is Liam said, let's do a 1952. It's called the Warlock's Parade. <laughs> and that was it. That was how you come yeah. up with it. Yeah. All right, then. In 1952, I was... Uh, on a horse. On, on horseback. horseback. Thank you. And I had three red balloons. Yes. I do recall those balloons as I had named them. One was Timmy. One Alfred. One Alfred. And one Blue Kettle. Blue Kettle uh, was full of magic. Magic that you had never seen before. In watery form. It was a water balloon. It was a floating water balloon. The reason I had these three uh, balloons was because of the Warlock's Parade. I had been to the Warlock's Parade, which you'll find in various parts of the world. Kenya, southern Japan, Nairobi, Syria, (laughs) Paris, (laughs) (laughs) Siberia. (laughs) 
Alaska. Timbuktu. These Portugal. Lo- okay. These locations of There was awards. one in Argentina. Thank you. I do recall. Okay. These locations of the Warlocks Parade. I believe I actually found one in Greenland once as well. (laughs) Yes, I went to the one in Greenland once, yes. But that year, I'd been to the one in... Portugal. Portugal, that's correct. A very sunny day it was. The wind blew softly against my face. As my coins jingled in my pocket... And the parade began. On. On. (laughs) On. The first float in the Warlocks Parade had a small man on it. Sitting on top, a giant elephant. He looked down at me and said, boy, give me a coin. And I did so. I gave him one single gold goblin. A goblin coin. The only currency the Warlocks Parade would accept. The Warlock... Sitting on top of... He was a warlock because everyone in the Warlocks Parade was is a, a warlock. warlock. Thank you. Setting Hence the name. The Warlocks, warlocks parade. parade. He gave me a single wish. I wished for a balloon. He gave me that balloon. <laughs> the balloon. <laughs> it's a montage. <laughs> <laughs> the balloon The was balloon was red. Floating. Yet not filled with magic. Nay. The second float... In the Warlock's Parade. Trundled by. It was a beautiful woman. Princess Agadali. Princess Agadali. From Kent. (laughs) (laughs) She looked down upon me and said, Boy, give me three spoons. Three spoons I had jangling from my hat. As previously on the invite to the Warlocks Parade in Portugal, it says specifically bring three spoons. Three spoons. Someone will hat. ask you. Someone will ask you for them. It happened to be Princess Agadali of Kent. <laughs> I handed her the three spoons. She lifted her dress. And below it, two testicles and a red balloon. I took the red balloon, the second red balloon that I got that day. And I took the testicles. <laughs> I added them to my own collection (laughs) Of nine (laughs) I've now got nine testicles The third float Contained a small Dancing monkey Strapped to The thigh of a large Eagle The eagle strapped to the face Of an enormous Giant Man 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 (laughs) <laughs> the man asked of me. He said, Do you have some testicles? And I said, I have but nine. I have but nine. How many do you require for that there shining balloon? And he said, Give me but one to even up your number. And uh, I did. I handed him the testicle. I gave him one single testicle. It was a brown, curly haired ball. <laughs> He took the testicle, he placed it inside a fish bowl and handed it to the monkey. The monkey passed down the final balloon, filled with liquid magic. And at last I could become the warlock I'd always wanted to be. I took the magical balloon, I pressed it to my face, uttered the words... Magical balloon face! Ah! 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 Cried the eagle as the bird... Wished over to the balloon and popped it. He popped it. The water trickled down my face. I had become a warlock prince. A warlock prince. A warlock prince. (laughs) With my new magical powers, I summoned up a spaceship. Left the solar system. And became... God. (laughs) (laughs) And that is the story of how... The God universe big, began. B- b- big Bang. Big Bang. <laughs> wow. A tale of love. A tale of glory. A tale of intrigue. A tale of testicles. A tale of animals being treated wrongly by <laughs> being strapped other animals. A strapped to a giant. Yes. A magical giant. Yep. Who 
liked even numbers. Exactly. He was only only okay with even numbers. I think that giant was actually obsessed with prime numbers. So you're telling me that eight was a prime number or one? Go on. You tell me any prime number. Both. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> What's the purpose of a prime number? Well, no one knows, but there's lots of them. Is it just... Are they like the upper class of numbers? They're the prime numbers. I don't know. I I don't know what kind of person would go to the lengths of trying to discover the next one. Because there's, there's loads of them, aren't there? Like the millions. Endless. And, and every now and again they go, oh, we've discovered another prime number. What does that prime number do? And and why did you spend years of your life if someone out there counting can tell until me you found one? Precisely what? the purpose yeah. of a prime number is in one sentence that would be fantastic if you can tweet it to us at Lafroto at Buffroto with the purpose of a prime, prime number, number you win you win you win you win you win now after the next break it will be Space Nan but we have an actual advert. Do you remember the request for adverts? Yes. One person did it. One. One single person. I think one. Okay. Uh, I think everyone else didn't believe us that we would do it. Okay. Fair play. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the whole podcast is full of lies. Why would we be telling the truth here? Saying that. We did tell the truth. And here is an advert from you. Wow. This advertisement is brought to you by Caitlin. I have a potato chip available that looks incredibly like Liam. Available from New Zealand, pick up only. See? That's amazing. So you're telling me that someone somewhere just made that off their own back, sent it in, and then we played it on the podcast. And the people listening right now have exactly the same chance as that person to advertise anything. Anything you want. Including you, Liam. Go on, go. Do you want 300 bags of gold? Yes. Then call this number now. 085-7-2-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-
and held the gun to the ghost child's face. I won't be your hitman, ghost child Nan. She pulled the trigger. <laughs> the ghost child disappeared. But forever, we just don't know. We just don't know. Space Nan readied her thrusters and flew out of a nearby window. <laughs> As Space Nan entered the stratosphere, she considered what the small child had said. A great war. Three apostles. She slowed down for a particularly tight corner around a small green planet known colloquially as the P of the Galaxy, when a huge light engulfed her. <laughs> Space Nan opened her eyes. Everything around her was white. Ooh, it's too bright in here for my old eyes. She was floating, and there before her was a smiling tree frog. Space Nan, said the tree frog. I am the first apostle of Ixchikoso. <laughs> <laughs> the most difficult word I could imagine writing. Space Nan was wary of the frog. She tapped a few buttons on her locator device 400. Error, 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 error. Bleep, 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 bleep. Where am I? She asked the tree frog. A better question would be when am I? Responded the tree frog with a hint of cliche in his voice. I haven't got much time. You must listen to me, Space <laughs> There's a war coming! The war of the ghost children! And the tree frogs! The tree frog began to transform and change. <laughs> you must come back, Space Nan! His tiny tree frog body began to bubble. Now it's time to rise! He grew larger and larger. His face became cracked and reptilian. He had become a dragon. <laughs> now, Space Nan! He bellowed. Kneel or die. Space Nan drew a flaming sword from its sheath on her side. The words of the ghost child echoed in her mind. When they have finished speaking to you, murder them. Help them. Space Nan stood before the bellowing tree frog, dragon, inside a giant white room. Looks like I fight the ghost children, you scaly flying eating bastard! Excuse my French! Space Nen ran at the tree frog dragon. Running! <laughs> <laughs> Running sound effect. The beast flapped its massive wings <laughs> and roared. <laughs> the battle continued for seven years. As the dragon fell, he returned to his tree frog state. That sword! Yes, Valerian steel! <laughs> <laughs> Here, Space Nan, take this! The tree frog handed Space Nan a value packet of ready salted crisps. <coughs> Eat these! <laughs> Eat these and know all I know! The second apostle awaits! Then he died. Forever. Wow! <laughs> To be continued. That was incredible. I, I wanted that to be as difficult for you as possible. Now, I can't do voices. Uh, if I do do a voice, it will change the second time I make that voice. It's so different to the first Space Nan's voice, that one. It, first of yep. all, it was just you. And then, I know. And then it became slightly older version of you. Mm-hmm. Last week, I think it was like, Oh, hello, I'm Space Nan. And this week it was, What? I'm Space Nan. Brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's exactly what <laughs> well, I Well, I wanted her to be more of a heroic figure. Yeah, and in this week's episode, she is. She, yeah. she battles a giant dragon tree frog. I imagine for Space For seven Nan, years. Every episode that she's going to sort of um, define herself. Like, she starts off just as a Space Nan. Yeah. But in episode two, I feel... As as the uh, character development goes on, <laughs> that she actually becomes more of a, a hero figure that we can actually get behind. Liam reviews. So reviewing Space Nan. Liam reviews <laughs> Space Nan. <laughs> yes, she is a hero. She a, is hero a hero for us all. Um, a hero for mankind. I would love to see drawings of 
Spaceman and the Dragon Frog fight. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, send them to uh, at Luffwoto on Twitter or at Buffwoto on Twitter. <laughs> and prepare for episode three, which I will make even more difficult for Liam. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast. If you liked it, then please click um, like, like or star it on iTunes. Depends where you're listening to it, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. But show appreciation in some form leave a comment or leave a review on itunes that'd be lovely yeah. that would be really good we've got a couple now we've got a couple of reviews on that's them. amazing maybe we'll review the reviews next week we should we'll review the reviews leave a review and, and maybe we'll, maybe maybe we'll if we remember it. we won't we will we might we we might all right then Bye bye. Goodbye then. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye then. Forever. forever. Not forever, but may- until next. Maybe week. until next. Bye bye. Bye. Podcast. All star cast. Who's the cast? We are.